Hey guys, Brandonia Productions here, and welcome to how to create your very own web browser part 3. Now in this part of the tutorial, we're actually going to be fixing it, so um, this text box displays what website you are on when you change websites. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit anything else in this tutorial, but that's mainly what we're going to be focusing on today. Okay, first thing I want to say about this tutorial is um, if you are subscribed to me, you'll probably notice that I've been putting a lot of more content on my channel. I'm sorry if you don't like this new content, but I'm, I'm sure some of our viewers do. So please tell me what you think about this new co content in the comments below. Okay, so let's get started with this tutorial. So how it worked previously is you typed a URL into this box down here, or up here, okay? And then it displayed what you typed in this web browser control. Now, the problem is, if you click on the link inside the web browser control, it will not reverse engineer and send the link back to the text box. But that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. So, what we want to do is we want to get it so as soon as the web browser changes um, the URL, then we're going to insert it into the text box. So, this will be in our web browser 1 coding. So go ahead and double click on Web Browser 1. Okay. Now, um, in, in the coding form, you've probably noticed this before, but up here there are all the controls we can choose from. And over here are all the uh, actions that the controls do. Okay. So now what we want to do is if, or we want to change it to Web Browser 1, and navigate to head. Okay, so this pretty much means that when the web browser one has got to a new web page. So when the web browser one has got to a new web page, we want to change the text of text box one. So we're going to do text box one dot text equals web browser one because up here that is where our web browser is dot URL. Now this is um, a subcategory of web browser where the web browser is browsing to, and then dot absolute URI. Now this is the absolute um, path of what the web browser is on. So if we type this, it should come up. So now once we test our program and press the start debugging button. We're going to wait for our set homepage to load at brandonsoft.com. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to youtube.com. Now notice as soon as YouTube loads, it adds the www in because it finished navigating. Now we're just going to watch a quick video, so I'm going to click on this guy's video. And if you notice, the uh, URL actually changed. So now instead of just being YouTube.com, it is the video link. Okay? So, now that we finished that pretty quickly, we're also going to um, figure out how to create our own homepage. In tutorial 2, we tried to create our homepage, but it did not work. So, what we're going to do is double click on the home button because that's where we press to go to the home page. Now, we're going to um, set the web browser to navigate to a certain page. Am I correct? Yes, of course. <laughs> so we're going to check out the web browser properties and where we defined where we wanted the home page to be is called the URL. Okay? So, Yes. So when we press the home button, we're going to navigate to a specific URL. So as we uh, specified in the go button command, where we navigate to the textbox1.txt, we're going to navigate to our home page, which in this case is brandonsoft.com. Okay. So now if we run the program, 
we will wait for the first page to load and then we can go to another page let's go to YouTube again okay and then if we click on the home button it goes right back to our specified home page which we typed okay so now that we've got the basic functions of a web browser done we're going to add some more complicated functions the first thing we're actually going to do is set the web browser one anchor to bottom left right and top so now it should when the form expands up the uh, web browser should also expand up so that should fix that problem okay so one of the uh, advanced features we are going to be looking at in this tutorial is actually recent history so when you look or when you go into your web browser right there's a little check mark right here and it brings down a menu for recent history so what we're going to do is start with that menu how do we do this well we gotta delete the text box and replace it with a tool called the combo box now if you look at the combo box it's exactly like the text box except it has a little drop down menu right there so then what we're gonna do is double click on the combo box and actually change everything where it says text box one to combo box one so I'm just gonna do this real fast okay so now that we have this set up every time a web, the web browser finishes navigating to a page we're going to want it to add a thing inside the combo box so we can also use the web browser navigated function where we change the text of the combo box so what we're gonna see is uh, or what we're gonna do is combo box one Oops, combo box one dot items dot items is all the items that are listed in the combo box when you press the uh, little arrow and then we're gonna press the dot add notice it's got a pink square so it's an action so we're actually going to add something to the items and then as parentheses you specify what the item is okay so we're going to add the web browser one dot URL dot absolute URI okay so now whenever the web browser finishes navigating it's going to add a new thing to the combo box let's check this out okay so it went somewhere now if we open up the combo box there it is we're going to go to youtube.com oh look there's youtube.com the thing is though if the web page has something else it needs to load it will load it twice so we're going to fix this in one of the next tutorials so thanks for watching how to make a web browser part four uh, this de dealt with the combo box and all the problems we had with it but before I go I'm going to check if the anchoring bug was fixed so we're just gonna maximize the form and if you look at that the web browser did change size accordingly okay so thanks again for watching this tutorial remember to rate comment and subscribe there are going to be more web browser tutorials and more tutorials like this um, please send me a message request a tutorial I'll try to fulfill it as best as I can but thanks for watching and have a good day